researcher will be able to make an inference towards his statistical research altogether member of the population on a random manner that's very very important for us so this is going to be absolutely a very very important question very very important factor altogether this makes it very very simple for the survey creator to have an effective inference this type of sampling method has a predefined range Good morning and welcome to the first session in unit 4 under business research methods where we are going to talk about the sampling techniques. Now the sampling is a technique of selecting individual members or a subset of the population to make statistical inferences from them and estimate the characteristics of the whole population. So when we talk about a class of having 100 students, out of which we will be looking into a sample size of 20 or 30. Why do we look into a sample here? Because that sample will be able to give me a reference about the entire class. So sampling is taking that smaller size among from the bigger size and trying to make you understand the characteristics. So similarly, there are different sampling methods that are available through which a researcher will be able to make an inference towards his statistical research altogether. So for a statistical research to happen, the researcher will try to take a sample out of the large population that is available, find out a suitable method and try to apply it to the research in order to get a fruitful result altogether. Now moving further, let's look into an example here. If a drug manufacturer would like to research the adverse side effects of a drug, on a country's population. It is almost impossible to conduct a research study that involves everyone there. So what we try to do in this case, the researcher decides a sample of the people from each of the demography as far as possible, then researches them and gives them a correct sample example or a correct result altogether. So what happens in sampling is that we try to go further, try to understand the effects of a large population by collecting a sample, a smaller size and trying to understand the various characteristics that are associated with it. Now, the types of sampling is classified under two types, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Now, when we talk about the types of sampling, we need to understand that under probability, the sampling technique is where the researcher sets a selection based on few selection criteria and chooses the member of the population on a random manner. That's very, very important for us to understand. All the members will have an equal opportunity to be a part of the sample and of this selection parameter. So that's very, very important for each one of us followed by the non-probability sampling. Under the non-probability sampling, it, in this method, the researcher will choose the members for the research at random and the sampling method is not fixed or a predefined method. It's going to be on a random basis. This is difficult. Why? Because when we look into the elements of population to have equal opportunity to be included in the sample. So probably a non-probability based sampling technique is slightly difficult and the way how you have to construct a complete factor in terms of non-probability sampling is even more challenging when compared to the probability. probability is always based upon some population which has been chosen randomly with some statistical method and here all the members who have been selected as a part of the sampling will definitely have an opportunity and that to an equal opportunity. Now let's get into it. In a population of 1000 members, every member will have a chance of 1 by 1000 which means to say that everybody will become a part of the sample. 
in probability sampling, the most biggest advantage that you need to understand is that it eliminates the bias that only certain people will be selected, certain will be thrown out. It's not going to be that. Every member will get a fair chance to be included in the sample. This is very, very important altogether. So one has to understand it before even we go into the sampling exercise followed by the simple random sampling technique here. One of the best probability sampling technique that helps in saving time and resources is a simple random technique sampling. It is a reliable method of obtaining information where every single member of the population is chosen randomly and not merely by chance. So this is going to be absolutely a very, very important question, very, very important factor altogether. When I say about the simple random technique, it is just going to come into picture where it saves your time and the resources and it's a very reliable method why because you are just going to obtain information from every single method every member of the population chosen randomly merely by a chance so out of random you're just going to pick it up and you're going to get it every individual member will have the same probability that means they will have an equal chance to be a part of the sample moving further let me give you an example here. For example, in an organization, the HR team, that's a human resource team, decides on conducting a team building activities it is likely to prefer picking chits out of a bowl. So we are going to put the names of all the people in a bowl and we are going to take it. Each out of the 500 employees will have an equal chance of getting selected. Now, this is the method which I would like to emphasize more. Why? Because this is an equal opportunity method. So for the researcher, this is not going to be on any kind of confusion. He's going to just randomly pick it up and whatever results that are going to come come out from that sample population is definitely going to be recorded. So that is why I would always say that this method is very, very effective and you will be able to get better results altogether. Moving further, cluster sampling. Now this is another methodology that we have to learn. Cluster sampling is a method where the researchers divide the entire population into sections or clusters that represent a population. Clusters are identical and they are being included in sample based on demographic parameters like age, sex, location, etc. So this makes it very, very simple for the survey creator to have an effective inference. So most of the time when you are going to do a cluster sampling, you are going to divide the population based on certain demographic factors. So that will make the researcher to gain an insight very easily. Now let's look at the example here. Now we'll, if you are going to look into the United States, the government wishes to evaluate the number of immigrants that are coming into the mainland US. They can divide the clusters based on their states like California, Texas, Florida, Massachusetts, or you're going to look into Colorado or Hawaii, all these kind of places. You can go on a demographic basis, divide it into cluster, find out who are the people, what is the level, and then we will be able to get a cluster sampling altogether. Nuts. When we start talking about the next sampling method known as the systematic sampling, the researchers use a systematic sampling method to choose the sample members of the population at regular intervals. So let's say that I'm going to take age as a regular interval. So every 10, 10 years, now let me say I'm going to take a sample starting from 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. So now what is going to happen? A regular interval of 10 years has been taken, a systematic sampling. It requires selection from of a starting point that can be repeated at regular intervals. So I'm repeating that 10, 10, 10 cycle on a regular basis in order to arrive at the result. This type of sampling method has a predefined range. So my predefined range here is 10. So that has been given and it has the least time consuming. Why? Because this kind of methodology is very, very simple and very effective in terms of doing this particular activity followed by the example that we are going to speak about. A researcher intends to collect a systematic sample 
of 500 people in a population of 5,000. He or she, as the numbers of the element, it is 1 to 5,000 will choose every 10th individual to be a part of it. So what I'm trying to do here is that I'm going to divide that 5,000 by 500, which gives me an interval gap of 10, 10 each. So in that, everybody are going to be covered. So that 1 to 5,000 is going to be covered at a gap interval of 10, 10 each followed by the stratified random sampling. As the name itself says, this is a methodology in which the researcher divides the population into smaller groups that don't overlap but represent the entire population. Now while sampling, these groups can be organized and then draw a sample from each group separately. So what is happening here is that I'm going to divide that segment in such a manner that where the population is, is able to be, you know, segregated in a smaller groups altogether that won't overlap, but they will represent the entire population. So I'm not going to, on the overlapping methodology. I'm not going to cut across one population over the other right on the method. I'm going to cover the entire population. I'm going to give you in smaller size and segments altogether. Now, the example which I'm looking here is that for a researcher looking to analyze the characteristics of the people belonging to different annual income divisions will create a strata according to the annual family income. Now, let's say I'm going to say 20,000, 21,000, 30, 31, 40, 41, etc. So what I'm going to do is that if I'm going to look into an income starting from 20K to 30K, my next would not be the same 30K, but I'm looking at 31 to 40, 41 to 50. I'm not overlapping here because that will not lead to confusion and that will be able to understand me in terms of taking up the data in a better manner. Now the uses of probability sampling, the first thing is that it reduces the sample bias. So the most important thing for a researcher today is that he should not have a bias while doing this particular research. He should be completely neutral in terms of understanding the results and its implication followed by the diverse population because when you go on a sampling method you are able to get a population that's very very diverse that's very large in nature so that's why diverse population is very important followed by creating an accurate sample now that is very important why because when you do an accurate sample you will be able to get accurate results so the particular sample which is really well built which is really having all the set characteristics Statistics probably correctly taken will give you better results in the long run followed by the non-probability sampling which we are coming convenient sampling now that is the word itself is so interesting convenient sampling this method is dependent on the ease of access to the subjects such as surveying customers at a mall or at a passerby on a busy street. It's usually called as convenience because researchers ease of carrying out and getting in touch with the subject. Now what happens here is that the researcher will have no authority to select anybody. Neither he has some sort of mindset in which he can go and ask them. A predefined ideology is not there. Only thing is that of course the cost limitation is is very very less you are just going to go on a methodology where you're just going to pick anybody and just start thinking about it on a easier method altogether so it's, it's like you know on a, just on a random basis you're going to take people and start looking into it but here the challenge that you are going to get is that that person whom you are going to select as a part of your research might not be the actual subject at all it might be just a random answer that you are going to get so convenient sampling again coming back is more for the researcher because he is getting the accessibility the easiness to do the research at his level at his speed altogether followed by the judgmental or purposive sampling now when i use the word judgmental one has to be very clear because it says that it is formed by discretion of the researcher researchers pursue purely consider the purpose of study along with the understanding of target audience so i know who are my target audience whom am i looking into that's where this judgmental sampling comes into picture for instance when researchers want to understand 
understand the thought process of people interested in studying for their masters. So the criteria, the question is going to be direct, trying to understand the audience, whether they are interested in pursuing their objective. So judgmental sampling is one which includes all kinds of questions targeted towards a specific group followed by the snowball sampling. When I use the word snowball itself, it is a method in which researchers apply when subjects are difficult to trace. Now, for example, it will be extremely challenging to survey shelterless people or illegal immigrants altogether. Now, this is also a very big question. Why? Because if you are going to take a subject of research where it is very, very difficult for you to understand the sample size, understand the subject population altogether, you are just going to go on a very, very random basis like a snowballing method and just try to address the subject as random, as general as possible. So that's where the snowball technique comes into picture. Followed by the quota sampling, which is even more interesting. The quota sampling, the selection of members in this sampling technique happens based on a preset standard. Now we are coming on to the basis called as the preset standard altogether. In this case, as a sample is formed based on specific attributes, the created sample will have the same qualities in the total population. It is a rapid method of collecting samples. Very, very important. It's a rapid method. It's not going to be a slow method at all. On a fast, as quick as possible, you are going to collect it. And this is going to be on specific attributes. Like if I'm going to study about people studying only commerce, only science, in that in certain specific areas, of study so then I'm going to go on to a quota sample that sample will be able to identify the total qualities of the population whom I'm going to look they also have the same kind of characteristics in the entire population taken for study now the uses of non probability sampling is quite interesting why because it is helping you to create an hypothesis so you will be able to come on to an assumption mode try to understand that whether there can be alternatives to what we are studying because many a times there are no prior information about the area of study so you can create alternatives to your own study you can say that yes there is a possibility of such an event to occur and you can also go back and say there is no probability of happening so what this non-probability sampling is doing is it's creating a platform for you to talk about the hypothesis similarly it's an exploratory research when we are talking about researchers can use the sampling of the technology the sampling methodology altogether where they can go further and study more about the subject they can explore they can take their own time to do it budget and time constraints which is there the non-probability is there where there are a budget and time constraints coming into picture you have to complete the research within a particular time limit you don't have that much of free time to do it then you are going to go on the non probability sampling technique with this I'm coming to the end of this particular session I hope and believe that this session was of a great help and resource to you in the upcoming classes, we are going to talk about more on the sampling methodology, which is very, very useful in terms of understanding the business research methods. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed, and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.